Then we'll talk about the movements of the teeth in aligners in mesiodistal direction. So how does it work? So I'll load my lecture. So as we already found out, aligners are not moving teeth by the uh, way of bodily movement. Mostly we see the inclination of the crown. So because of that in this clinical case, if I want to uh, uh, correct the midline, right now the crowns have the, uh, 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 the proper inclination, uh, just proper tip. So during the uh, movement to the left, their position would be only getting better. So what we see here, we started to use aligners instead of the bodily movement, instead of the translation, we see the tip of the crowns. So the tip follows, continues, and teeth would be positioned in a more vertical position because we managed to have this uh, tip of the crown that we discussed before that happens when you use aligners. Another clinical case, we uh, move the midline because we move uh, incisors of upper jaw to the left Canines have class 2 molecular relationship. Patient uh, doesn't have any complaints about that. We also do not complain about that. This is good physiologic position of the teeth. So we start to displace incisors to the left. And uh, we see their good vertical position. And the midline becomes centered. And the same case before and after. Another interesting clinical example where, once again, the crowns are in uh, divergence. They you see uh, in, uh, look in different directions. They want to correct the midline. And this kind of inclination is uh, favorable for us because we know that the movement will be due to the inclination of the crown. So we just push the teeth uh, towards each other, we do the IPR between the central incisors and step by step we decrease this black triangle. And the final result. So what kind of conclusion we could get? Aligners for moving of the crown of the teeth, incisors, in mesiodistal direction, they move them by the tipping, not by the translation. Another interesting case when we have a severe irritation of the teeth. So we perform the derotation, we rotate the distal part uh, palately, the mesial part buccally. What happens during that kind of movement? I will go back. During that, we see that the distal corners start to hang. So the angulation of the crowns would visually become not very beautiful for our, for our hours, not very aesthetic. Before that, it was masked by the rotation because the liners could not bodily move the crown. So we have the... Uh, the worsening of the angulation and I wanted to use attachments for the control of uh, tipping or for the angulation and I'll show you some examples that I use. You see, uh, they supposed to change the angulation of the crown, not just uh, incline it with the central of rotation in the center of the root but it doesn't work out. So the distal edges start to hang. We see the worsening of the angulation. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to uh, pre prescribe some kind of elastics for uh, uh, making the angulation better, but it doesn't give any results. So why it happened? Because a liner is thin uh, near the gingival margin and very thick and uh, with big pressure in the incisal edge. So we don't have enough force for the translation to get the bodily movement of the crown. Another clinical case, and I was trying 
uh, thanks to another trick. You see the triangular form of that attachment. I was trying to change the angulation of the tooth, but uh, in reality what we uh, what we've got is black triangle. The angulation didn't change. Not not thanks to the uh, triangular or beveled rectangular or double attachments. Uh, nothing uh, was was uh, good in changing of the angulation of the crown because liner couldn't produce enough force for getting this movement. And of course here I uh, was supposed to use some auxiliaries that we'll talk about later just to correct the angulation of these crowns and don't try to rely only on attachments in these cases. Another clinical case that is almost the same, you see the distal part is uh, rotated uh, buckly, the mesial part palatally, so we try the correction. First we uh, move all the teeth in protrusion, so I uh, displace all the teeth buckly just to correct the, the crowding in the beginning. So we see that this uh, the problem of angulation becomes apparent, becomes visible. I try to uh, prescribe the wearing of elastics for uh, getting the uh, tooth uh, be positioned in a plant position in a liner. A patient is very motivated and use elastics, but in the end I had to do the restoration of the incisal edge because my technique didn't work out. Another clinical case also, we can take notice uh, uh, you see some problems with angulation. I place these attachments. You see there are different directions of attachments uh, on the teeth uh, to one. And at the same time, you see that angulation doesn't work. So uh, for the com compensating of this problem, I take the diamond burr and do the diamond orthodontics, so-called diamond orthodontics, I perform the, uh, the camouflage of this problem because of the recontouring of the crown. Very often with the liners we work with patients who has diastema and uh, spaces between teeth. In adult uh, patients, we do the uh, surgical incision of the uh, uh, of the soft tissues out between the teeth, so of the frenum. You see, then the two uh, inclined teeth mesially more and more, and we see that the movement is help. I have a. Uh, uh, is performing due to their inclination. And you see the distal parts start to hang, but we can do anything. We can do the recontouring of the crowns and uh, pretend that it's supposed to be like that. One of the techniques I use for uh, getting more bodily movement uh, for a close on of the diastema is uh, fixing of two buttons or two brackets with hooks on a palatal surface or on a buccal surface and in that case our closing of the diastemas would be more bodily uh, with less inclination of the crown. Another clinical case we do the uh, cut of the frenum and we start to move teeth mesially. They also try to uh, they go in overlapping on each other. The, uh, so uh, we see that uh, the contact is closing. It's not very tight when we perform the IPR so it becomes more tight. Nothing new. And we see also this kind of tipping of the uh, crown's parallel to each other and we try to correct it with the contouring of the incisal, incisal edges. In this case is not very favorable for correction with the liners because as you see when we'll start 
uh, to move teeth towards each other, they would be inclined and the diastem is quite big. So if we're not uh, planning uh, restorations, for example, with, with veneers, so then we have a risk of getting the worsening of the aesthetic and maybe it's better not to do anything. So what happens? So the crowns, they start to incline, they start to tip, then they get in, in contact and we see very big black triangular. What do we have to do right now? And right now we have to add auxiliaries. auxiliaries. So if we want uh, incisors to be moved bodily and not by the tipping, we have to, in a maximum high position, bond buttons, or it's better to bo to bond brackets with hooks, so we have the very high position of the of the elastic chain, so that the root and the crown will be moving uh, with maximum parallelism towards each other. And I recommend to practice this kind of technique. I see that uh, there are some problems with the internet, but we continue. This is not the topic of the lecture, but we'll talk about the elastics to cor correct class 2 and class 3. We use them quite often for uh, treatment, for example, with extraction. Uh, uh, the, uh, there are two types of uh, fixing of the elastics uh, with its pros and cons that we're going to discuss right now. For example, on the left part, uh, here we see this kind of angulation of the canine that we want to move it not by bodily movement, but just only displacing its crown to I uh, have the in distal inclination of the crown part of the canine and on the left side you see other way around we couldn't afford to lose uh, any degree of the torque so that's why we have to uh, prescribe different elastics for each side for example on the left side uh, on the right side uh, in the first quadrant I would work even without elastics only thanks to attachments we could uh, easily uh, get the inclination of the teeth and it will be good for their final position that's what i did so on, on the uh, left side the patient was wearing elastics the button was fixed uh, very close to the um, gingival margin of the canine and on the right side the patient was fixing the elastics on a liner and we compare these two methods so let's start with the method when the patient fix elastic to the liner itself so here we completely remove uh, the load from the teeth also we have less visible elements but these kind of cutouts uh, I don't like them because they could deform and bend the liner during the load. They can also lead to the displacement of the liner from the arches, also can worse, worsening the retention, so our movements wouldn't be fully uh, achieved. And the, the, uh, uh, you see that the pull is more vertical than horizontal. We are talking about the uh, using of some kind of elements on the teeth, so it can get us more translation, more bodily movement, less loss of the torque. So this kind of uh, fixation would not deform aligners, but each aligner has to be manually uh, cut out uh, by our staff or by ourselves and aesthetically it's more visible so we have to fix some additional elements on the teeth this technique 
can get give us the uh, opportunity to uh, more effective correct uh, corrections of class 2 and class 3. I'll show you some examples of the articles. It's not the topic of our lecture. And so a very important article from my point of view, maxillary molar and distillation, uh, two, three millimeters. It was one of the movements that occurs almost bodily. Because we are uh, uh, we're pushing from the uh, liners on anterior teeth, so the uh, the anchorage will be anterior teeth. So we do sequential distillation, one tooth, then second, then third. So not more than two from each side. So the distillation could be performed bodily with a minimum loss of a vertical component. And some examples of how I'm performing the correction in the buccal segment. It's mostly distillation with the liners. And if you want to also advance lower jaw and do mesialization of the lower jaw, and I will prescribe the wearing of the class two elastics to the patient. Another interesting patient, first we perform the major uh, expansion, class two elastic, elastics, and the final result. As you see, canine is is uh, a little bit uh, in a worse position. It uh, lost its torque because you couldn't get completely um, bodily movement. In case of treatment with expansion, with extraction, also uh, elastics could get us a result. Uh, with minimum inclination of the crown, we'll have maximum bodily movement in other clinical case. Also, class 2 correction, elastics. Uh, we fixed buttons on canines, and also we can have additional also force for extrusion of these teeth. the decreasing of the oral bite because of the advancement of the lower jaw using fixation of class 2 elastics on elastics or on, on buttons. I uh, uh, put buttons with a minimal system, initial situation, and the result. So we'll go back to our topic. So mesial distal a movement with uh, auxiliaries, so with limitations and also uh, pro problem with the liners. I wanted to uh, show you the treatment with extraction of incisor on lower jaw symptoms. The software shows us that it's the only good option, that extraction of premolars or uh, IPR would not be good for this case. So we perform the extraction of the incisor on lower jaw. So with that treatment was performed when I was just a young orthodontist, when I was starting using liners in 2012, eight years ago, and I didn't fully understand how the teeth move. So we were quite brave in extracting of the incisor. Clean check showed us that everything would be very beautiful, but what we are seeing, we are noticing that step by step, the uh, incisor and canine are getting in touch with each other, in contacting with each other, but if we'll see how the movement occurred, we see that incisors inclined to the right and canine inclined to the left. That's one more proof that aligners, they move teeth by the inclination of the teeth, not by the translation. And additionally, they're not very good in controlling the vertical component that we didn't level the occlusal plane, but it was planned in a clean check. Another clinical example, where I was performing the treatment with extraction of the incisor and lower jaw. And then the next time I decided to close the spaces with braces, uh, upper jaw uh, we used aligners and lower jaw we used braces. As you take notice, we quite easily and quickly performed the correction. And here I managed to create 
leveled occlusal plane uh, also are to level the axis of the teeth and the main conclusions of the things that we've seen and we've, we've discussed align or remove the anterior teeth in a mesodistal plane by tilting of the crown by their inclination attachments for the crown angulation so these double attachments or you they are usually depicted like double attachments like these beveled ellipses they're not working they're not effective buttons and elastics for prevention of the loss of angulation of the uh, incisor crowns uh, should be used for closing the spaces big spaces and for closing uh, black triangles between anterior teeth but also do not forget about the ability to make contouring of the crowns or contouring of the incisal edges uh, of the anterior teeth just to camouflage uh, to mask the defect of the uh, tooth position after the use of the liners and uh, mesial movements of the posterior teeth has to be carried out only with auxiliaries uh, otherwise we would get the tilt of the crown instead of the translation I referenced and I cited the, uh, the article uh, that showed that uh, distillation is quite good bodily with aligners because we are anchoring on upper anterior teeth so the whole surface of aligners would be the anchorage for us and we can push from it uh, teeth during distillation but during mesial movement we don't have any anchorage we just push with the uh, back surface or distal surface of the uh, of the aligner on the crown and of course it will be tilted so we have to plan wisely the next topic is performing of the IPR 